Hello and welcome to the Salt and Light Bible Study Series. My name is Pastor Quincy and I will be leading the study of God's Word. Our title for today's lesson is Praise God with Music. Praise God with Music. Hallelujah. And our reading will be coming from Psalms chapter 149 verses 1. Verses 1. Let's have a quick word of prayer and let's get right into the study of God's word. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you and we praise you. We magnify your name for this awesome and glorious day that you've gave, given us, Lord God. We pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would get the glory out of this lesson. We pray in the name of Jesus that I will decrease and that you will increase, Father God. Get your glory from this lesson. Show forth your might and your power throughout our lives, Lord God. We thank you for this opportunity to dive into your word. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again, the title of our lesson for today is Praise God with Music. Praise God with Music. One of my favorite moments in service is when we are praising the Lord corporately. One of my favorite times also is when I hear a song and I'm able to share that song with somebody else, not just any song, but a song of praise and worship to our Lord and our Savior. That song of praise, being able to share that song, hoping that it will be a blessing to somebody else. My first question for you today, are you able to share your praise with somebody else? Can somebody see something in your life that will cause them to praise the Lord for who he is, not for who we are, but for who he is? Praise is an action word. Hallelujah. Praise is an action word. It is something that we do to show forth how grateful we are for who God is and what he's done in our lives. So I don't know who you are. You might want to go for a praise break right even now. You might want to say, Lord, I praise you for everything that you've done in my life and just began to worship and to glorify God for who he is. Hallelujah. The scripture says in Psalms chapter 149, verse one, it says, praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praises in the assembly of the faithful. Verse one starts off by saying, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We know in scripture, in Psalm chapter 22 and three, it says that God inhabits the praises of his people. God is sitting down, relaxing in your presence while you're praising him. Hallelujah. It also says, put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness in Isaiah 61 and 3. God is saying, it's time out for that spirit of heaviness or that spirit that causes you to faint to be upon your life. He's saying, put on the garment of praise right now in the name of Jesus and begin to worship him for who he is. Hallelujah. Praise means to shine, to be clear, to be brilliant. Praise means to shine and reflect the light, to magnify the Lord. When you think about a magnifying glass, anytime you put it up to the sun, it's going to be hot exactly where the magnifying glass is directed towards. That actually is a good example of when we magnify the Lord. The place where we are should be changed. The, the temperature of our lives should go up. There should be a change. There be, should be some type of atmosphere change because of your praise and worship. Hallelujah. Praise also is, should be clear. It should be transparent. It should be unclouded. Our lives should exalt God in a way where only thing that people see is him when we praise. Nothing else. It's not a show. It's not, um, I ain't getting on anybody for their dance or anything like that. But praise and worship 
should be a place where you exalt the Lord for who he is. And you are there giving him glory. It's transparent. People should be able to see through you and see him in your praise and worship. Hallelujah. It's brilliant. It's very bright. It's radiant. Radiant, meaning that the very thing, the very person that you are should radiate the person of Christ, the person of, of Jesus, the very person of Jesus, not ourselves, not our attitudes, but praise and worship should supersede anything and everything in that moment and in that time. Hallelujah. You can only radiate that which you are close to. If you ain't close to God, if you're not close to his presence, then you're not going to radiate him. You're not going to show forth his praise. Hallelujah. Our praise should reflect Christ while our lives should be transparent and unclouded to allow his bright and radiant light to shine through us as we praise him. Hallelujah. His light should be able to shine through us. Our lives should not be clouded with sin and other things to weigh us down. We should be free to worship the Lord for who he is. That's why at times you see people raise their hands. Raising of your hands is a sign of surrenderance and saying, Lord, here I am. I want to worship you in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. I want to praise you for who you are. Hallelujah. The verse continues to say, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord a new song. Singing utter sounds of, uh, of, of, of music, um, melody. Um, God is saying, you know, sing to the Lord a new song. You might say, you know what? I can't sing, but that's okay, right? Some people can't sing, but you can just hum. You can just utter some words of praise unto our God. Sing to the Lord, our master, our king, that which is in charge, in authority, our Lord, a new song, a fresh song, a fresh song. It also means hot or crisp. One of the most popular slogans that's going around right now, one of the commercials is eat fresh. Whenever you walk into one of those bread bakery shops, even though you might be saying, you know what, I'm cutting my carbs right now or something like that. Even though you might not be eating bread, it's something about the smell of fresh baked bread, right? If you ever cut your grass before, I didn't know this. But I found out that when you cut your cut your grass, part of the smell, that smell of fresh cut grass is the new grass that's waiting, anticipating to to grow. And you might be saying in your own life, I need to cut back. I need to cut some grass. And when you cut the grass, the snakes will be revealed. Hallelujah. I don't know who that's for. But God is saying it's time to cut back some stuff so that you can get some fresh growth in your life. Hallelujah. Psalms chapter 40 verse 3 says it like this as well. It says, and he hath put a fresh new song in my mouth. Every praise unto our God. Many shall see it in fear and shall trust in the Lord. A fresh new song in my mouth. Even praise unto God. Many shall see it, recognize it in fear. Your, your enemies are just waiting for you to, to praise God so they can step back from you. But most importantly, people should see it. And they too, because of your praise, because of that new song in your mouth, they will begin to trust in the Lord. You're looking for some change in your home. You're looking for some change on your job. I encourage you to praise the Lord. Come into that place worshiping 
with, with, with praise on your lips, worship, worshiping him from the time you walk in that door to the time you walk into the, the space that you're in and just worship and, 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 and sing praises unto our God and things will change around you. Hallelujah. Every great song has a theme and a title. A theme is a unifying dominant idea. Every great superhero or movie has a theme song. Question, what is the theme or title or song that your life is singing? Hallelujah. I'll ask that question again. What is the theme or title or song that your life is singing? Is the title of your life tired, weary, and worn? Is it the same old song? Is the theme of your life depression? Is the theme of your life trauma? Is the theme of your life vic victim and not victory? Is the theme of your life abuse and neglect? Is the theme of your life death and destruction? God is saying he wants to give you a new song. Psalms chapter 32 verse 7 says it like this. You are a hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with songs of deliverance. Hallelujah. God is saying he wants to change that old song to a new song called deliverance. Hallelujah. Are you ready for some deliverance in your life? Are you ready to be delivered from that situation, from that relationship, from that from that job? Whatever that thing is, God is saying, I want to deliver you from that. But check this out. He also want, wants to give you some peace in the midst of that situation. So maybe he's calling you to endure. But that new song is to cause you to endure in the place that ultimately was meant to take you out. God is saying he's going to give you a song of deliverance. Hallelujah. Anybody wants some deliverance out there? Hallelujah. Martin Luther said it like this. He said, my heart which is so full to overflow, has often been comforted and refreshed by music when sick and weary. Anybody sick and weary out there today? I double dog dare you to put on some, some of those artists, some Fred or some of those artists, and, and just begin to worship the Lord. Fred Hammond, just, just begin to, to worship the Lord and allow that song to usher you into God's presence. Hallelujah. Lamentations verses 3 verses 22 and 23 says it like this as well. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies being afresh every morning. Anybody need a theme song of God's mercies being fresh for them every morning? In closing, Ezekiel chapter 18 and 31 says it like this as well. Put all of your rebellion behind you. Your theme song is rebellion right now. But it says, and find yourself a fresh new heart and a new spirit, a fresh spirit. God is saying your theme song is going to be a fresh heart and a fresh spirit. It goes on to say, for why should you die, O people of Israel? Why should your theme song be de death and destruction? God is saying he wants to give you a new heart. He wants to give you a new spirit. Hallelujah. Ezekiel, and this is our last scripture. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 27 says it like this. And I'm reading it from the New Living Translation. And I will give you a new heart. And put a new spirit in you. And I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender and responsive heart. My last question. Are you ready to change the theme song of your life? Are you responsive to the call to the spirit of God so he can do something new in your life? You're tired of the old. You want a new theme song for your life. And God is saying, I'm going to give you that. The word says he came to give you life and that to the full. So if you want that life and life to the full, just follow, just 
follow this prayer that I'm going to pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We magnify your name. We pray right now in the name of Jesus that under the sound of my voice, with your spirit flowing through the device that they're watching this on, Lord God, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus that that person that does not know you and the pardon of their sins, that they will know you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus as well, that that person that was on the path of death and destruction, that you would cause their life to be switched into that path, that their hearts would be responsive to you, Father God, that an overflow of joy, that your spirit will just come upon their lives, Lord God. Bless them now, Lord God. Continue to be with them. Let their theme song of their life be a song of deliverance, Lord God. Be a song of mercy, Father God. And so we just thank you, we praise you, and we magnify your name. Holy Ghost, take over their lives. We just thank you, Father God. This world is treacherous. Take over their lives, Lord God. We just pray that they surrender all unto you. We love you, Father God. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, you'll see the ways to give. You'll also um, see your address for the church if you want to mail your tithes and your offerings to the church as well. Um, but most importantly, just know that God loves you, that he wants to have a relationship with you and just know that he is a ever, ever changing God, ever, to, ever able to change the, the, the things that are going on around us. So keep the faith, stand his grace and know that God loves you. Be blessed.